We're used to links in a web page standing for other pages. We're also used to items in a pull-down menu standing for actions that we're choosing. Let's look at how we can set identifiers in a program to stand for values. Basically, we're going to tame or domesticate those values. Let's make Jumbo stand for, well, this elephant. Now, we don't have to catch it anymore. It comes when it's called. Let's make Lucky stand for a number that I don't want to have to remember all the time. Let's define words to stand for a whole bunch of words that would be way too tedious to type time and time and time and time again. Now, whenever I type lucky or words or jumbo, they simply evaluate to the values they stand for. Click run or perhaps type control T and each of them evaluates inside of the program. See? Lucky evaluated to that lucky number. Words evaluated to all those words. Jumbo evaluated to that exuberant elephant. There's another way of looking at this evaluation process and we can do this in Intermediate Student with Lambda language. Click the stepper. The green is before, the purple is after. Each step changes green to purple. Lucky becomes that number. Words evaluates to all those words, jumbo to that elephant. Let's try one extra layer of steps. I'll define new identifiers to stand for something in terms of the already defined identifiers. So in case I forget what I called my lucky number, I defined a new identifier. Or I can take the reciprocal of my lucky number without having to remember it or I can define something to stand for a smaller but still exuberant elephant. With the words, I might just be interested in the first, let's say, 20 characters of all those words. So I define a new identifier to stand for that. Now, whenever I type those identifiers, they evaluate to new values and the stepper turns out to be a good way to learn about how these evaluation steps take place. Just highlight the parts that we're interested in stepping through. Now when I click the stepper, open it up a little bigger, I can say jump to the beginning of the selected area. Now the green lucky, of course, evaluates to its new value, which is that number. So if I step, I see that I have to evaluate a new lucky to that number and then one over that lucky. Jumbo evaluates to that elephant. So if I step, it looks like I have to evaluate that expression, which is a smaller elephant. That's what small jumbo stands for. Opening words, we first evaluate what words itself is, and now we evaluate the substring expression, and it's just the first 20 characters. So now we see how small jumbo inverse lucky opening words evaluate. Now how about a third layer of stepping? Is that going to make things horribly complicated? Let's define an identifier mirror small jumbo to be our small jumbo, that exuberant elephant, except it's being exuberant in the opposite direction. So again, when I type mirror small jumbo, it's going to evaluate to a new value. Let's highlight it click on the stepper, and again we're going to save ourselves time by jumping to the beginning of the selected area. So small ju jumbo should evaluate to that small elephant. But I'm going to need to click first to make it take that step. And now flip horizontal of that small elephant that tells us the final value of mirror small jumbo. So that's how these defined identifiers work, and if I click Run, they all evaluate to their values.